So it's Monday and there is already a bunch of stupidity on the timeline. <laughs> We're obviously gonna talk about it. So as you should already know by now, I will have a new podcast episode up for you only on patreon.com slash Adrian Expression and of course youtube.com slash Avatar Adrian. I wanna get to at least 5k subs by the end of this month. So hopefully y'all can help me out with that over on my other channel. Go there, check it out, especially if you like TV shows and nerdy stuff and superheroes and da da da. Y'all already know what it is, okay? Um, but here comes Betsy Devils. Here comes Betsy Devil! <laughs> I haven't said that shit in so long, and today she definitely get well, I guess this week. I, I don't know when it actually broke. I think it was today though. Um, but yeah, she gave me a reason to today. She gave me a reason to today. As you can tell from the title, Betsy Devils, she wants the abolition of the Department of Education. Now, I would kind of be seeing what she was talking about if she meant the abolition of my student loans or something like that. Then we could really get into it, but this is, this is what she said. So, um, I'm gonna read something from Florida Phoenix first and then from Business Insider because it's just like, what the hell? <laughs> so, and it just, it just starts like this. She said, and she was speaking at mom, like this Moms for Liberty Education Summit or some shit like that. It was conservative, obviously. Um, but she said, I personally think the Department of Education should not exist. Um, and when she said that, apparently members of the audience leapt to their feet cheering and applauding. I'm gonna read this real quick. Betsy DeVos is one of uh, the prominent Republicans featured at the three-day summit in Tampa, which provided training to, which provided training to members from 30 states on how to create conservative majorities on their local school boards. Um, in what they call a parental rights movement. Moms for Liberty was founded in Florida, um, sparked in part by parents' objection to their children being required to wear face masks at school during the height of the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, so I guess this this kind of summit or this group, of course, you know, teaches people how to recruit conservatives on their school board. It also uh, is focused on the legal defense of parental rights over school board authority, strategic research, and ways to fight gender ideology in our schools and uh, <laughs> social and emotional learning and also restorative justice. And then when you couple the fact that the Moms for Liberty um, founder, what is her name, Tiffany Justice, um, she said, what did she call teachers unions? She said it was the K, K through 12 cartel. Like, can you imagine calling, can you imagine calling teachers unions? To, anyway, <laughs> the cartel. Anyway, so now we have to keep in mind, before I talk about it, because we have to keep in mind that Bessie, this is not the first time that Bessie Devil says some shit like this. So it, this comes from Business Insider. On June 15th, she said, I've often said, I frankly don't think the Department of Education should exist. And she was asked, okay, did that play well with like the people you're around and stuff? Did that play well with your colleagues? And she said, not necessarily with the staff there, but with a lot of folks outside of Washington, it does. And she said, basically, she wanted to do stuff and the, the career folks that were around her didn't want to do none of that shit. They backed away from, <laughs> they were like really working against her or trying to, and it's just crazy the fact that you know what I mean? You already have these career politicians who are willing to do whatever to, to maximize their career, right? You know how crazy you have to be to get those kinds of people to be like, no, I'm not doing that. Or no, I like that's what you talk about. What you talk about, Bessie, is crazy as hell. Now, keep in mind that Bessie, among many other crazy trifling things, she was cutting back education spending. She was cutting back just like the, the role or the authority that the government has when it comes to education and just left all the bullshit to the state. She was just basically stripping shit back. Like that's what she was doing the whole time. So honestly, it should not be surprising that she does not want this shit to exist because when she was sitting in that chair, when she was leading this thing, she was she was literally dismantling the shit. But yeah, I think if you look, if you zoom out and look at the bigger picture of all this, I think that it's just, it's not only about Betsy, right? I think that this kind of approach is something that we're gonna see more often, more visibly, like more upfront 
uh, especially from the conservative side. Like, they're just gonna, like, especially next next election cycle, whatever. Like, I just feel like they're just like, all right, game's over. We see what we can get away with. Like, we see what happened. We're going to get in here. We're going to start dismantling all this shit. We're taking apart all this shit. I just feel like after the dismantling does not come, like, rebuilding, even rebuilding on their terms. I just think that they're counting on chaos. Like, I just think I think they're stripping shit down, dismantling a bunch of shit, tearing shit up. It, not, not because they want to, like I said, not because they want to stack some shit back up and rebuild the shit. I think that they want chaos, okay? Anyway, speaking of chaos, this has come from NBC. Man with a long gun entered a mall south of Indianapolis and opened fire. He killed three and injured two. Now, keep in mind that in Indiana, where this took place on July 1st, okay? They just signed uh, into law the fact that you are allowed in that state to carry a handgun, to carry those weapons without any uh, permit, without any permit at all, right? I feel like it's a given. We already know that these kinds of laws will not stop everybody, duh. Um, but like many other people have pointed out, seatbelt laws are in place. You gotta register your car. You gotta have a license and permit drive that hole. You got to have all type of insurance, like they're not playing, and you got to update that registration in motherfucking year. So it's just like, why Why is it more difficult to drive a car around this hole than to get a motherfucking gun? You see what I'm saying? It doesn't make any fucking sense. But that's not all that happened in that shooting, right? So the shooter appeared to have been fatally shot by a 22-year-old, quote-unquote, good Samaritan, that's what they call him, this person, who witnessed the attack and opened fire with a handgun with the intention of ending the assault. Um, the police chief over there said the real hero of the day was the Samaritan that was lawfully carrying a firearm who was able to stop the shooter almost as soon as it began. Um, the mayor also said that this person saved lives and on behalf of the city of Greenwood, I am grateful for this quick action and heroism uh, in this situation. Now, I think that it's like I've, I've said this many times on Twitter, but I, I think and, and in general, I feel like we are going to for real be living in a world a, a fortnight, except we ain't got no responsibility. Like it just, and then, and they're going to take this and um, frame it as some kind of. They already did as some kind of feel good story. Oh, it's a good Samaritan, but it's just like, are we really going to be having shootouts at the mall? Are we are we really going to be having shootouts at the fucking grocery store? And then if okay, suppose we have a situation where the cops come and they have no idea who's the good guy and who's the bad guy. They're gonna make up their own. They're gonna go. Well, I thought I just thought every everybody with a gun just did. You know, it just it's just so many variables, and it's to me it's so unnecessary, especially when you consider how guns, gun laws, all that kind of stuff is handled in different countries that are similar to the U.S. It's like, yes, of course, we're all happy that this person who was shooting up the mall got stopped. But at the end of the day, the question remains, are we going to be walking around here like it's the Wild Wild West? Like, like is that what's gonna happen? Like, is that, that's really what's gonna happen? Okay. So Neo apparently said this in The Independent about still listening to R. Kelly, and we can end it here. I wanna hear what y'all think about it, honestly. So, um... He said, Neo said, I have always been been a person that can separate the art from the artist. I don't give a damn about your personal life. I don't give a damn about what you've done wrong or what you've done right. If I like the song and it's attached to a memory that means something to me, it has nothing to do with the artist as a person anymore. It's what this song means to me. I've been in parties where someone will turn on an R. Kelly record and people will be like, boo. And Neil says that's bullshit because you know good and well that before this happened, you'd be rocking out to this song just like everybody else. From time to time, I still listen to R. Kelly music. You just can't deny the quality. Anybody who tries to say R. Kelly isn't one of the best songwriters on the face of the planet because of what he did in his personal life, you're looking at it the wrong, or you're looking at the wrong thing. There's so many things I want to say. First thing, it's just like there's so many abusers up in the music industry that it's, just, it's not surprising that many people have this stance. The second thing is if someone did something to one of the people that you care about or assaulted one of the people, one of your family members, sexually assaulted you, I'm sure you would not want to be hearing this, this man's song all around the motherfucking, all around the goddamn city. I'm sure if you went to a party and heard that person's song, you would be not separating they person what they did personally from their fucking art. The third thing is you can't separate no, no, you cannot separate this man's personal shit from his art, even if even if that was a thing, because he's his songs are about children. <laughs> 
His songs are about chill. What are you talking about? So yeah, what Neo says is annoying as hell, but I don't think that it's surprising. I think there are many people um, who are not, you know, people who are musicians, people who are uh, artists, and people who are not artists. People who are everyday citizens who, who feel the same exact way that he does. And But I feel like stances like this is how the abuse gets, and the sexual assault and crazy shit gets normalized in the first place. It's almost like, okay, you did it, but we're gonna act like we didn't see it. Um, and if you could see that kind of thinking happening right now with celebrities and artists right now, and then years down the line, we're gonna be like, oh my God, how did this, we, we never saw this coming. It's just like, okay. So yeah, I just think that a lot of people who are dragging the shit out of Neo for saying this, they be defending their own crazy ass faves as well too. So it's just like, <laughs> I really feel like for the most part, a lot of people are not gonna give a fuck about no type of issue unless it's unless it's personally affecting them or maybe the people they care about or their family or something. But other than that, I think if people can sit down and watch a cute movie, watch a good movie, people can sit down and listen to a cute song, a lot of times that allows them to just more easily forget about like, the real victims of these like crazy ass abusers. It should not take a cute two step or stepping in the name of love, y'all to forget every fucking thing. Or to be really pressed when other people aren't comfortable listening to this this man sing about kids. Like, <laughs> yeah. But okay. <laughs> but yeah, that's all I wanted to talk about. Uh, on that note, love y'all so much. Thank you so much for checking me out and watching my video. Check my description box for everything else. And make sure that you have a good goddamn time. Hey, 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 hey. Can you fuck me in your all black?